Good morning. That's the official good morning. As many of you know, and, and as Mike has just mentioned, we're really digging in deeper into those three words, um, faith, hope and love. Mike just mentioned them from uh, 1 Thessalonians. If you want to turn to that, you can. It's in chapter one and verse, verse two to three. Thanks very much. Thank you. So there we are, we're digging deeper into those three words and they, th those three words trip up our tongues quite, quite quickly. Um, so it's been good during these few weeks to stop and dwell more fully um, on what God's saying to us at this time and how we can apply what God is saying to our day-to-day -day thinking and our actions and our attitudes. Um, Mike, a couple of uh, weeks ago, spoke about uh, faith and uh, emphasised that faith in God starts in our, in our thinking, in our reasoning, and that, but that we can experience the reality of it as we step out and move out more and more in faith. And last week, Andy spoke so well about, uh, about love and how our love for God leads naturally uh, to an overflow of, of loving actions. And as you know, I have the privilege today about speaking about hope. You may have noticed if you've got your Bibles open, these particular verses um, in the letter uh, to newish believers were written by the Apostle Paul in the context of prayer. The believers were under pressure, as we know, and being persecuted. And what an encouragement it must have been for them to hear the words of this letter and know that the Apostle Paul and others were continually praying for them and thanking God for them. A bit like we've been doing this morning for each other. In fact, this short letter of Thessalonians is peppered with Paul's prayers for the church. And it encourages us to keep praying for one another and for others too. If you cast your eyes down to chapter 2 and verse 13, Paul writes, we continually thank God because you received the word of God. And in chapter 3, there's a longer prayer, verses 11 to 13, and yet another prayer at the conclusion of this short letter um, in chapter 5. Maybe during the week, we can all take a closer look at these prayers and pray them over ourselves and others. Prayer, as we know, is powerful and we are to be alert and to always pray for all the saints, all the Christians we know, and we can pray for others too. So as we focus and dig deeper into hope, let's consider firstly how biblical hope is very different from how the world sees hope. In the English language, the way we refer to hope is more akin to wishful thinking, whereas biblical hope is a confident and a certain thing. People often say things like, um, I hope my parcel arrives tomorrow or I hope it uh, rains on th later this week. I've just seeded my lawn or Maybe if you're an Arsenal fan, there might be one or two out there. You might be hoping that they beat Leeds this afternoon. Or if you're a Leeds fan, you might be hoping it's the other way round. Of course, there's no guarantee with this type of earthly hope, this hope based on wishful thinking. And it's not the sort of hope that the Bible speaks on in the verse that we've been looking at. Uh, when I was a teenager, I once uh, really, really hoped my bike would, my new bike that I'd saved up for for months and months would arrive on a particular day. And I'd got it marked in my diary and I was crossing off the days. And when I went to the shop to collect it, it wasn't there because the owner had forgotten to order it. You know, earthly hope will often disappoint us. But biblical hope is something different. It's certain and it's sure. Rose in her testimony recently encouraged us all to hold unswervingly to the hope we profess in Jesus. That verse is in Hebrews and that's a, that testimony on YouTube if you uh, want to listen to it again. Um, we've sung this morning, the first song we sung, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus and his faithfulness. Biblical hope is built on the sure foundation of Jesus Christ. And Jen, too, 
uh, shared um, a Monday morning message back in April. And as you've heard after the sermon, she's going to share um, about a new song that she wrote, which is full of faith and hope. And, uh, and, and I'm, I'm looking forward to that, Jay. As Christians, we can and should always be ready to share why we have this certain hope. Please pray about opportunities for us all to talk about it and to share why we view hope in this way and that Jesus himself is the hope for the world. We've got some great new um, booklets. You can just see one here maybe. And uh, we're going to pop those into food parcels and in gift bags. You can see it's called Hope in, maybe you can see that, in uncertain times. We want to be, we want to be witnesses to that truth, don't we? Um, please pray about the effectiveness of those booklets. And if you want to look at one for yourself, uh, just ask me. In the meantime, let's prepare ourselves to be ready as it says in Peter's letter in chapter three and verse five, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason, the reason for the hope that you have. We all know we may not be able to celebrate, celebrate Christmas in what we regard as a, a normal way. Whatever the government decides, God is not on lockdown. Christmas isn't cancelled, it's still Christmas. It's still the season when we remember again that Jesus, the hope for all the world was born and we remember why he came to earth. So biblical hope, biblical hope is based on the person of Jesus, not wishful thinking and it's not just optimistic thinking. I hope things will work out okay, it's not like that. He's our past hope. He's already come to earth and he came for a reason. He's our present hope. He's with us now and he's our future hope too. He's coming again. He's the God who was and is and is to come. Throughout the Old Testament, there are a couple of, well, there's more than two words which are used for hope. Um, one is Yahal and one is Kavar. Um, and they include within them a, a sort of meaning of patient waiting and expectation and certainty all at the same time. In Psalm 30, David writes, but now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. And in Greek, uh, I'm, I'm no scholar of these sorts of things. And if you want to know a bit more, um, there's quite a good Bible project YouTube video, um, uh, 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 if you just want to Google that. But the, the word in Greek is elpis, and there's a verb as well. You could, you, but if you want to dig a bit deeper for yourselves, I encourage you to do that. So patient waiting, expectation and certainty. Someone who waited patiently and in expectation in that way was Simeon. A thousand years after David was writing the Psalms and 700 years after Isaiah was prophesying, unto us a son is born, unto us a son is given, unto us a child is born, sorry, unto us a son is given. A thousand years after David, 700 years after Isaiah, Simeon was waiting patiently and in expectation. And when hope in human form arrived on earth, God revealed to him just eight days after Jesus was born that the baby which Mary and Joseph brought to the temple in Jerusalem was the long expected, hoped for Messiah and savior of the world. How amazing is that? So there's many, many reasons for us to embrace the biblical meaning of hope. Jesus, who lived and died on earth and was resurrected, is, as Peter writes in his first letter, our living hope. Our living hope, here and now. And we wait, too, in certain knowledge of an expectation that he will come again. Rich, if you can share the screen again, 
I suggest we, in our homes, read out loud the verses that come up on the screen. They come from the truth of God's word, from Peter's letter, um, chapter one of the first letter and verses three to seven. So let's read that out together. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. It's kept in heaven for us who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice. We greatly rejoice, Lord. Though now for a little while, you may have to suffer, suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Biblical hope, biblical hope is 100% rock solid, reliable, sure, and certain, even when we don't see it. Hallelujah. Let's embrace hope. Let's choose hope. As Paul writes in Romans chapter 5 and verse 5, Hope does not disappoint. And if you want to dig deeper still into biblical hope, um, I'm suggesting this to myself as well. I, I, I suggest you read more of the book of Romans. Romans contains more mentions of hope than any other book in the New Testament. And I would especially recommend chapters 8 and 15. In fact, Tina, I think, quoted from chapter 8, or somebody did this morning. So let's consider for a moment what life is like without hope. Well, the short answer, of course, is hopeless. Without Jesus in our lives, there is no hope. There was a time when I was in my 30s, when I didn't even think about God at all. I decided in my arrogance that he didn't exist, that Jesus was just a myth. I had a good job, family, friends, good holidays, and superficially my life was going along smoothly. Even when one summer holiday and I was dealing with something particularly distressing and most of my friends were away, I never even thought about God or God's people or talking to them. It never crossed my mind at all. I can remember sitting alone um, on the floor of my front room here in the house I'm in now, just trying to think who to talk to. You know, God in his mercy never gave up on me and several years later caused me to reconsider my dismissal of him and revealed his love for me. I, who was once far away from Christ, was brought near through the blood of Christ. I am eternally grateful and we've just remembered again Jesus's shed blood, which he did once and for all on that cross. Only those who know Jesus have real hope for the future, the sure expectation of eternal resurrected life, full purification from sin, an unhindered fellowship, friendship with God. This shows the greatness of our salvation. Having once been hopeless, we now have a sure hope in Jesus Christ. Let's keep praying that certainty of hope for others, too. If we regard hope as an anchor for our souls, that's in Hebrews, 
619, we can spend our days loving and serving God and looking outwards to others. I'm just going to pray a prayer that's in the middle of the letter to the Thessalonians over ourselves now. Lord, may our love increase. May our love increase and overflow for each other and everyone else. May you strengthen our hearts so that we will be blameless and holy in the presence of you, our God and Father, and when the Lord Jesus comes again. So as I draw to a close, let me mention one other reason for us to hope in the Lord. There are loads more reasons, but back in the Old Testament, the, Old Te uh, the, uh, the prophet Isaiah, who I mentioned before, who lived in stormy and difficult times, difficult political times in Israel's history, writes, as many of you will know in chapter 41, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. If we just backpedal a bit from that verse into uh, chapter 41, verse 28, do you not know, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases power to the weak. Even the youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. What a wonderful promise. They will soar on wings of eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And if we just go back to Thessalonians for a, for a moment, Paul thanked God for the endurance of the Thessalonian Christians. And they were quite new Christians. Their endurance in the face of opposition and persecution, persecution their perseverance, their steadfastness, which was inspired by hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's know that we too can renew our strength by hoping in the Lord. So let's encourage one another to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction and faithful in prayer now and always. Amen. Back to Mike. Thanks, Rona.